This is Ted Dyer. In April of 2012, a woman named Mary and her nine-year-old daughter moved into the apartment next door to where he and his girlfriend lived. Mary would develop a friendship with the couple, and they would talk with each other almost every day. Eventually, Mary would let her daughter stay with the couple while she worked or ran errands. A year had passed, and one night, Mary's daughter was spending time at Ted's apartment. Mary realized it was getting late, so she decided to walk over and walk her daughter home. Mary would later tell the police that something told her not to knock on Ted's door and just go inside. After entering the apartment, Mary did not see her daughter, but she did see that Ted's bedroom door was slightly open, so she decided to take a peek inside. Mary would find Ted molesting her daughter in the corner of the room, and she quickly called the police. Her daughter would inform the police that this was not the first time this had happened, and Ted would be arrested and sent to prison for 25 years. After going to prison, Ted would meet a man named Stephen Sandison. Both men shared the same cell, so they would share the reasons why they were there with each other. Stephen explained that after a lifetime of being in and out of jail for minor crimes, he had killed his girlfriend and received life in prison without parole. Ted would tell Stephen his story, explaining that he had been set up and he was not guilty of the crime he was being charged with. One thing Stephen had not told Ted was that he too had been molested several times as a young boy, so hearing Ted's story ignited a fire inside of him. Using the shoelaces from Ted's shoes, Stephen took Ted's life. Just go ahead and tell us what happened. All right, I guess he decided to clear his conscience or something, but, you know, he told me what he was in prison for, that he had, you know, was accused of raping a, an 11-year-old girl, and he got 25 to life for it, and, you know, I told him that's enough. I don't want to hear any more. Um, I first, you know, punched him a couple times. Still wouldn't shut up. Still kept telling me he wanted to explain that he didn't do it that he was being set up and all this stuff and I don't know, I just got mad and then hit him and, and then I killed him. When I knocked, I hit him and knocked him out and then I took the shoelaces out of his shoes, tied them together, wrapped it around his neck and strangled him. Then um, after I was done, I mean, I was, I was aware of what I was doing, you know, and then I just put him on his bed and covered him up and climbed in my bed and went to sleep. I noticed, you know, we obviously we've been in, in your cell. Mm -hmm. That it appears that all of your belongings you packed up. Yeah. Okay. W when did you do that? Mm, right after I knew he was dead. Right after you knew. So. And the reason for doing that would be because when you go to the hole, that's usually what the police do to pack it up. And I figured that yeah, they're going to tear my shit up. So. Okay. Let me just do it myself. So, yes. so what happened to the shoelaces? Lost them down the toilet. Okay. Now those laces came out of Ted's shoes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then when you were done, you flushed it down the toilet. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Why would you do that? Because I'm an idiot. I don't know. Just I mean, you know, obviously I don't think right. I'm a, in prison for most of my life, so my thinking isn't really rational. <coughs> I don't know. I just kind of thought that that was the appropriate thing to do at that time. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I don't know. I just you know, I know murdering somebody's not a good thing but I mean Jesus man if, yeah. if the things this guy did he things he said he did yeah. I wouldn't want someone like that on the street again so I, I do what's necessary I do what some people won't I mean you guys are cops you arrest people all the time for stuff that you wish you could shoot him in the face. I already know that I'm not stupid <laughs> you know I mean I understand. there's there's crimes that it shouldn't be committed so you know, I just have, I don't know, I just don't have any empathy for okay. people, so. So, so basically, what you did, you, you figure Ted got what he deserved. Ted got what he deserved, I believe that with all my heart. Okay. Look, you know, I hit him a couple of times and I pulled the chair back and sat in the chair and then um, he kind of got up posturing on me. You know, that's kind of like means, you know, he got up like, you know, so I was like, okay, you know, and then I caught him again. And when he went down, I was like, yeah, sucks to be you. I just don't think stabbing or shooting somebody's a little too impersonal.
you're going to kill somebody, you might as well be personal about it, right? You think that's more personal? Yeah, I just, you know, I know it sounds kind of crazy, but if you have to go to that extent, yeah. I want it to be personal. I don't, I don't like violence, but if I have to go to that extent, then I want it to be personal. Even though he was already serving life in prison, Stephen was convicted again for murder. As he stood before the court awaiting his sentencing, he was asked about taking Ted's life. To the second count of uh, murder in the second degree. Guilty? Yes, sir. And doing so freely and voluntarily? Yes. Doing so because you are guilty? Uh, yes, sir. All right. Did you? The reason I killed him was because he was a child molester. But you did, in fact, kill him? Oh, sure. And you intended to kill him? Oh, sure. Yes. Well, if it's all right, I'd like to tell you where it started. Go ahead. All right, well, we were, he was my bunkie, and I had found out that he was in prison for uh, child molestation, a really bad case. So um, that night he was trying to justify why he did it, and I just told him to be quiet, and he would have to leave in the morning to find a new cell. But he continued to talk about it and try to justify it, so he was a little bit bigger to me, so I got down, and I hit him in his face a few times, and when he fell, I wrapped a cord around his neck, and I took his life. After the murder, Stephen used the phone to call his friend who ran a small radio show on the internet. He wanted to explain to the world why he took Ted's life. Yourself, and like pretend you're talking to the website people. Okay, tell me when. Right now. Okay, hello everybody. This is uh, Steve, Steve Sanderson. You're on the webpage that my very, very good friend Luke set up. I want y'all to know that this is legit because there's a few web pages out there that for some reason somebody seems to think that they're righteous enough to, to put it up for me. And I guess that's okay as long as it's doing what it should do. And what the web page should do is help you people out there realize what I've been through and what you need to watch out for. Because let me tell you something, darkness and evil is out there with you people, not in prison with me. It's out there with you. And I want you all to know what I've gone through and what other people have gone through is not something we need to hide. Um, a lot of people want to know why I did what I did, you know, why I killed this man and, you know, many others, truthfully. Um, and the reason is, is because of, uh, well, I don't know, something inside of me as a child, I was horribly molested, horribly, uh, to the fact of scarring. You know, beyond, uh, you know, from the ages of uh, four up to 12 and then beyond. Um, I'll elaborate on that later, but I just wanted everybody to, I wanted to touch base with everybody. And I wanted to explain to everybody my reasons for doing things. And you see my drawings and there's reasons behind every drawing. Uh, right now I'm calling you from prison, actually. The Ionia Maximum Security Complex where I'm housed after I murdered uh, Mr. Dyer if you can call him a mister. And um, I'm getting help from my very, very close friend, Luke. So there's another website out there with some lady named Vanessa something who, you know, I'm told has been soliciting money and I wouldn't give her anything because, you know, she even stole from my friend here, Luke. Um, he was trying to send me a secure pack and look out for me because I have no support out there in the family or friends or anything, basically just him. Uh, and she ripped the guy off, so I thought that was horrible. Um, and the other websites, I don't know about. But I just wanted to touch base with you people, and I wanted to let you know that um, you're not alone out there. You know, the people that have gone through this, the people that have felt the darkness, that have traveled through the forest and come out the other side, you're not alone. And there's no reason why you should be ashamed of what happened to you, because it's definitely not your fault. And I also don't want you to believe in that concept that Everybody that was molested as a child goes out and molests other people. That's a lie. That is a stone-cold lie, and, and I'm proof of that. I've never, ever touched a woman, never touched a, a, a raped a child. Um, I've never done any of that garbage to any innocents. Now, have I killed other people? Sure, of course I have. You know, I've even killed women before. But I assure you, you know, as, as my word... Is my word is my bond that none of them were innocent. Anybody I've ever taken their life, none of them were innocent, I assure you. They all had that coming. And not just in my concept of what justice is, but in the concept of people.
people that have the same type of heart as mine. Because we're locking these child molesters up, we're locking these rapists up, and then we're letting them go. And it, the whole cycle starts over again, and they're destroying our children, they're destroying the future. You know, I'm supposed to be out there with you people. I'm supposed to be out there taking care of a family, loving somebody, and I don't even know what those things are. I have no concept of what love is. You know, I've, I've had girlfriends that in, in relationships never lasted more than a week or two because I was terrified that to open myself to anybody. So, I mean, you know, again, I'm not blaming anybody. I don't blame anybody from where I'm at. I take responsibility for all the things I've done. But I want you people out there to understand that there's a bigger picture going on. There, there, there's a bigger scenario going on. And, um, you know, I'm kind of nervous. This is my first time talking to you. And, and I want you to know that this is not the last. If you have any questions about me, you're free to, to email me or free to write me um, or to contact Luke. Um, very good friend. I mean, and, and, he, and he's a man that you can trust. This, this man is, and his family have invited me into their hearts and their homes and, and have... You know, when I didn't have toothpaste, they sent me money to buy toothpaste. So, you know, I, I hear a lot of people say, oh, I wish we could look out for you. But you know what? Most of them are just lying, sex, shit, and bullshit. And I don't expect anybody to give me anything. Nobody owes me anything. Um, but you can help, fine. I have artwork. I'm willing to do artwork for anybody that's willing to, you know, um, whatever, supply the pictures, the ideas. I can draw pretty good, I think. And, um, and I also uh, am going to write a book about uh, my experiences and what to look out for. Because a lot of people think monsters, you know, are the guy down the street, the old guy that's, they're not, it's not. The old guy that's lurking around the parking lot or the, the you know, the dude that's uh, trimming the bushes and looking through your windows. <laughs> uh, no, the people that are evil are the guys that are right there next to you on the couch in the room upstairs your next door neighbor, your police officers, your corrections officers, these are people that are the evil. These are the people that want to destroy everything good in this world. And that being children, and that being women, and that being the elderly. And these are things we need to look out for. And, you know, sure, prison's full of people that are pieces of shit. You know, and I'm the first one to say I'm glad that there is a system. Because, my God, it would be horrible if there wasn't. But like I said, I'm just touching down now when I get a little more nervous or a little less nervous. I'm sorry. I'll um, I'll be talking to you from time to time. You know, if you have questions, please be feel free to ask and, and who can relay them to me. Um, all I ask is that you can help when you can. Well, help help uh, reimburse Luke, not me, but, but send them into the website. You got a few dollars, got an extra 50 cents. You know, I'd be appreciative. You know, I'm going to give you guys valuable information, and I'm going to fucking put smart work up there that maybe you might want to, uh, you know, help out with. Again, you don't have to. It's not something that you have to do. It's not something that's required. You know, we'll accept any conversations from anybody. Um, I guess, you know, I'm going to get back and talk to Luke, and I, and I hope to hear from some of you people. Um, there's a few people that... You know, I would like to, to thank. There's a guy named Brian Resno, who's a very good friend, and, and Jay Downs, who have, have shown themselves to be really good friends, and a lot of others that have sent me, you know, some money. I appreciate the fact that they've done that. You know, I would have appreciated a letter more and to talk to you more because it is really miserable and lonely in here, and of course it's supposed to be, but, you know, I guess it is what it is. So I hope to hear from you people. Um, this is a true website, and this is a... Uh, this is really me. So if you have any questions, just uh, email me or write me or talk to Luke. Uh, I guess that's all for now. You guys have a good day. Uh, be careful and be safe. Stephen remains in prison for the rest of his life. Some say he is a hero for killing a man who touched a child, while others claim that he is just insane and it didn't matter who was in that cell with him. He just wanted to kill. I would love to hear your thoughts on this video. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time here on the Red Tree Stories YouTube channel.